What's up everyone? We are back with another farming video. So make sure you hit that like button. Let me know you like these farming videos and let's get into it. Now, this farming strategy holds a special place in my heart because it is the farming strategy I did my very first POE video on. In fact, if it wasn't for making a video on the strategy, you would not be seeing this video right now because people liked it, helped people, got a decent amount of views, and it showed me, oh, maybe there is something here. Maybe I should keep making more videos. And here we are. Now, it was kind of a bummer the last couple of leaks because the strategy wasn't that great just because there was only one Delirium Orb that was worth it, and that was the Skittering Delirium Orb, the Scarab Orb, and also the Currency Exchange wasn't a thing. Currency Exchange is huge because now you have, don't have to wait for certain of the Delirium Orbs that we're going to be rerolling to to sell because sometimes that can take some time. They do sell, but they you know would take a little bit, and some people are impatient, and I didn't want people to say, come in all the time and say my delirium orb uh, for my currency or my divination cards aren't selling all the time but now they do because of the currency exchange that plus the fact that at this point in the league they seem to have gone up in price namely three different orbs are up in price so this is definitely without a doubt worth it i was running it for a couple hours last night and was making really good currency now for the passive tree we are taking no surprise delirium and harvest notes we are going to go up the middle, go to the left, force Delirium, get some more chance to contain a del Mirror of Delirium, get some Scarabs, go up, get these Harvest Nodes, go around. You can either go around this way or get these two. But the thing is, with this strategy, we are going to be using just one Scarab, and that is the Harvest Scarab. They're one Chaos, they're very cheap, and they're definitely worth it. So it is better just to go around the outside and get 4% extra chance to drop Connected Map for a little bit more of Map Sustain. And we go up here, get some more Harvest Nodes, have a chance for a Life Force to be duplicated, go towards the center, get some Quandi Nodes, get some more Scarab Chance up here. I like to run Cartography Scarabs and Ambush Scarabs at least, because they, the special the Ambush Scarabs are worth quite a bit, not to mention that the Ambush Scarab holds the uh, most, um, uh, most expensive Scarab there is, I think it's the Scarab of Containment, uh, are the ones that make all the monsters go in the strong boxes, so this is always a great one to keep. And the cartography scarab because it's good if you want some cartography scarabs not to mention they sell but also for maps of state if you need some more maps go up here we get some invasive adversaries a map contains 10 percent more monster packs consisting of difficult and rewarding monsters the monster packs actually are just generally good but they also help with the delirium because the more monsters you have the higher you can pump up the delirium get some more scarab chance over here this delirium node as we uh, go around the bend is very important gives you map completion plus one to the rewards which means once you kill the boss it's going to jump a whole another tier higher now i'll go over this when i run a map and show the you know just an overview of the strategy but what you want to do is get to six or incredibly close to six when you go into the boss room so you can jump up to that seven reward tier level difference between six or seven and six and seven isn't massive or anything if you get six delirium rewards at the end of running these it is not the end of the world, but obviously you want to shoot for seven. We come down here, we get Chiseled Perfection, which is going to make the maps harder, but give you a little bit more quantity and loot drops and all that good stuff, but it does make the map a little harder. So if, you know, with Delirium especially, if it feels a little too tough, you can absolutely take these points out. But if you can run them, I suggest keeping them. Then we go down here, just get some more chance to contain a Mirror of Delirium because we get this to 100%, so it is guaranteed every time. Go around the corner, go into Searing Exarch a little bit. Nothing wrong with Searing Exarch. Uh, always a good currency maker right there. Uh, go up here, we get a better chance for Delirium to offer more reward types. This is obviously good. Now, down here is the most annoying part of the tree because you will notice I go around here, get these two, and then go down here, get some more Scarab, but then get these. And the reason we can't just get these two nodes and we have to go around this way is because the chance for uh, to contain a delirium mirror is on the right side, and we'd have to go through unending nightmare, which turns off our ability to get delirium orbs cannot be found in your maps, which means the delirium is timed. But don't worry, we are running a map that it isn't going to matter. It is the best map for delirium. You've guessed it. It is strand. We'll go over that in a minute. And by in a minute, I mean right now. We are running strand and dark forest. Now you need a connected map and strand has some pretty crappy connected maps. I do not like cells, and I do not like the vault map for sure, 
alt map is pretty shitty. Uh, so we are running Dark Forest. Now they switch these up every league. Usually Strand is connected to a better one. For a while it was Fields, uh, if I remember correctly, and I really liked Fields. Dark Forest is fine. This works too. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, not ideal. I would have preferred one a little bit better for Delirium. But we are ping-ponging between them. So I favor a lot of Strand maps and then a couple of Dark Forest. Now you do not, not need all of these unlocked. I'd say try and get like six or seven of them. So you can get, you know, four Strand maps or two or three Dark Forest at the same time. So you can ping pong. And while you're ping ponging between them, they can drop each other's, um, they can drop the map of the other kind more often. Now, when you run these maps, you want to run them rare, ideally T14 plus. If not, it is going to be hard. I mean, you could still do it with a, you know, just a magic or a blue map. That is perfectly fine, but you are probably only going to hit the seven rewards because obviously there won't be as many monsters. It'll be harder to do. Now, if you really want to guarantee you're going to be able to get to that seven rewards by the end of the map, you can add a Breach Scarab in. Breach monsters count towards the Delirium. Uh, I believe Legion does too. There are other mechanics you can add in there just for the sake of getting more monsters to make it easier to run. But with Strand, generally, if you're running it rare, uh, just with no other Scarabs or anything like that, you're going to be able to hit that six before you get to the boss and then Killing the boss is going to give you the map completion, and that Atlas node is going to bump you up to 7. If you are following the Atlas tree that I just laid out, you're going to want to use a Harvest Scarab to Forest Harvest, so we have Harvest and Delirium. 100% for its container Delirium Mirror, but we did not take any of the Harvest nodes, especially down here, that give it a chance to appear, so it most likely will not appear unless we force it. Also, to save points, we're not using Crop Rotation. I really, really do like Crop Rotation. I think it makes it a little bit more fun, but with this strategy, I suggest just saving the points and putting them into something else. All right, so in the map device, you can just put on the quantity since we are forcing harvest with the harvest scarab. There are other scarabs you can use, by the way. You can use the harvest scarab of doubling. Make sure you are doing 80% plus maps if you're using the harvest scarab of doubling to make sure it is, you know, pretty worth it. And it is. The harvest scarab of doubling can get relatively expensive, but it is worth it to run as long as the quantity on your maps is, you know, this 78 would be borderline. I would probably try to push it, but for the sake of simplicity, sometimes it's better just to not think about things and just run through and do the damn map. So when you're running one of these maps, specifically a strand, you will see the mirror. What you want to do is you want to hit the mirror and you want to wait a couple seconds for the monsters, the delirium monsters to start spawning. If you hit the mirror and start killing stuff before the delirium gets fully up, it will not count towards the kill count. So you want to hit the map, back up if it is placed in a spot that's a little bit forward in the map. And then once it starts spawning, then you can run through, start killing stuff. Strand is amazing for this because it is incredibly linear. You still want to zigzag a little bit because you want to be getting as many monsters as possible. But for the most part, it is very easy to kill most of the things in the map. Now, once you get to the harvest, this is the sacred grove right here. You can go in and this pauses the delirium timer. It at least, I, it at least immensely slows it down. I'm pretty sure it just flat out pauses it so you can take your time in here. Now, since we're not using crop rotations, again, delirium monsters spawn in here. So it's also good for getting quantity. Uh, so clear that away before you start looking at the plants. But since we're not using the crop rotation node, this is very simple. You want just to take the plant with the higher blue number. You can see this has a bunch of whites on it, grays and whites. You want the one that is blue because that is the guaranteed essence drops or the life force drops. So this is going to give blue. Now, if you see two numbers that are the same, say one was this purple had a one and this blue had a one blue, you would want to do the blue because in this order, yellow, blue, purple. Yellow's worth the most, blue is second, purple's worth the least. Especially as we get later in leagues, depending on when you're watching this video, yellow ends up being worth a lot more because it's used for things like the divination card gamble. Uh, and people like to gamble near the end of the league, spend their extra currency, just see if they can get lucky duping uh, an apothecary or something. Crazy. So you just hit the higher one with the better color. Uh, some monsters are going to spawn. You kill them. Uh, because of our Atlas nodes, some life force might duplicate. Uh, and the monsters might duplicate also. Now these uh, harvest monsters can get quite strong, especially if you're using the harvest scarab of doubling. That will actually double their life as well. Pick up the harvest, move to the next thing, pick the one with the higher blue. There's a white, 
there's one blue, we would pick this one. Lastly, the plants are all paired off. So once you pick one of the two, the other one is going to wilt. Most likely, again, see, two yellow, two blue, we would pick the two yellow because yellow is worth more. But because of our Atlas Passive, there is a chance for one of these plants not to wilt, and you get both, but you cannot count on that because it is only a 10% chance. So finished the harvest, got a decent amount of yellow life force, that's 12 chaos, that's 4 chaos, that's another 4 chaos, so looking about 20 chaos for an average harvest. Now because it's a little rippy, and because the way delirium works is the fog kind of chases you, as you well as you go in the fog it starts to dissipate. Now we do take some nodes that slow it down quite a bit, especially the singular eternity, dissipates 25% slower. 10 additional seconds before dissipating but if you die and start at the beginning you are out of the fog that is bad it will end the fog early so it is highly suggested that as you're moving through the map if you are worried about dying or if you have kind of a squishier build to put town portals up so if you die you are not starting at the beginning of the map i usually just automatically will put a portal down in once i get in the harvest in case some of the monsters are a little strong in here that is not a big deal or another combination is you can link cast on death with a portal gem and when you die it'll automatically put up a portal if you have space uh, in your links for it so that when you die it automatically puts up a portal you don't earn any progress as you get deeper into the map but you can see we're now at six rewards which is the goal to get there and there is the boss door i suggest also putting a town portal up as soon as you get in the boss door there's going to be some more Delirium Monsters in here and these two bosses right here. That can drop the Icy Brothers card, which is an amazing card. Gives you Fraction Orbs, but it is also extremely rare, even for the rarity it is at. Found a Unique right there. I'm going to put that in my Disenchant Bench at King's March, so that will always help. And then once you're done, you'll see we got seven on the... Like as you can't see. Yeah. Yeah. Seven right there. So once you kill the boss, I had six, it jumped up to seven. Then there's a button right here in the bottom right corner. You can end the delirium since we're so far ahead. We don't need to wait for it to end. When it's going to end, you will see a timer pop up on your screen that says, uh, you're out of the fog and stuff's about to go down. Get a big pop, get a delirium orb, got some chaos, got some maps, simulacrum splinters. Uh, simulacrum farming isn't that amazing. This league, uh, as far as I can tell, I saw Empyrean doing something on it, but they do sell once you get about 300 of these bad boys, you will get a simulacrum that you can sell for, I think about 30 to 40 chaos. Now, once you have your delirium orb or whatever dropped, put that in your stash and re-roll the delirium orb. If it is not currency, divination, or scarab. So you can see this one is a timeless delirium orb. If we go to my delirium orbs tab, these are the ones you want. You want the divination card one, you want the scattering one, this one's ideal, this is worth the most, or you want the currency one. This is the least worth, but it is the most common to roll. So the make or break of this strategy is whether this thing is worth uh, getting. And generally, you know, it's about eight to nine chaos, super easy to roll to. This makes this strategy possible, the worth of this orb right here because the rerolling is weighted. So to reroll, you want your hoarder crafting station. If you do not have one in your base, click on the arrow down here in your hideout decorations you can type in the filter decor down here you can type in hoarder crafting take this drag it onto your hideout close everything out unclick edit and click down now you can see i have my hoarder crafting station right here i can put my deli in here i can search deli orb and you can see for blue essence which we're going to be getting some from the harvest you can reroll delirium orb we're going to reroll it until we get one of those three and you can see this is the most common it only costs 30 harvest to reroll that into an orb I can sell. Now you can keep doing this and start selling them through your stash tab. You do not need one of these fancy delirium tabs at all. You can just put them on any trade tab and sell them that way. Uh, you can see I can sell five of these skittering or about divine. It looks like the average is one for four. That's what I'd put it at one divine for four of them. These are the hardest to roll though. So don't expect to get nearly as many of them as you do the fine delirium orbs. Now you can wait until you get, you know, 16 of them and sell them for a divine. Sometimes they can be a little bit slow to sell. These are not slow to sell. These are quicker. These can take a little bit of time to sell. But thanks to the currency exchange, if you want to just sell them immediately, you can say, I want some chaos. I have 
a currency delirium orb. Uh, one, 10 chaos, they actually sell, it looks better on the currency exchange than they do just selling them on the trade thing. Always check that because that is the case with certain things. I've found things like darker half cards that go for about 80 to 90 chaos if I trade them just upright. They'll go with the currency exchange, it's more like 120. So always check that. So there you go, place order complete. Right there, there's 10 chaos for a simple and quick map. Now you're also gonna be getting scarabs you should sell and also life force. You can see you can wait um, until you have the amount for a divine. Uh, you can see this is about 6,600 for a divine, so I could sell the amount I have for about three divine. I have a ton of blue essence uh, saved up. I could sell that for a bunch of divine, but you can see it is worth less than the yellow essence or the life force. That's why we like that. And then the purple is worth the least. That's about 9,600 for a divine. Remember how you sell these. Um, the thing you want goes on the outside, so if you want one divine, it's one slash whatever, 6,500. One divine for 6,500 life force. That's how you list it. Because of the delirium and just more monster pack size, again, if you're having a hard time getting to that six reward type before you go in the boss room. Now, remember, there are some monsters in the boss room. So if you're just almost or just under six rewards for the delirium, you can usually hit six by just going in and killing the monsters that are surrounding the boss. That's not a big deal, but if you're having trouble or say you need to run these on blue maps, your build just isn't strong enough yet, throw a breach scarab in there. Breaches give a bunch more monsters and they're going to give you the ability to hit that reward and they're worth it. But as long as you're able to get to six or close to six by the boss room, they are not necessary. If you're wondering why we are forcing delirium mirrors on the atlas tree and not forcing harvest harvest you know we aren't switching it it's simply because at the time making this video harvest scarabs you can get one to one they're worth one chaos you can buy 20 of them at a time or 100 of them at a time for one chaos a piece and the delirium ones are a little bit more expensive not much more expensive but you know uh, 10 chaos right now will get you about eight to nine of them so it's not that big a deal and we want to be kind of on the left side of the map anyways, which is where Delirium is. And to get 100% on the Harvest, we would need this node right here, I believe. So that is obviously uh, a little out of the way for us and a little bit more wasted points. Now that is the strategy, guys. Still very strong. Well, it, it got strong again. It was actually pretty weak the last couple of leagues. But it is back, especially with the currency exchange. You can make chaos very quickly. It's very straightforward. Run in, go to the Harvest. Not doing crop rotation, so it's very simple. Pick the higher blue number. If it's the same, pick the yellow. If there's no yellow, pick the blue. If there's no blue, pick the highest purple. Make sure you like this video. It helps the video a ton. And subscribe if you're not already subscribed. There, I have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash talk. Make sure you get followed over there and come hang out with us. And also, we have a Discord. Link is in the description with all the links to everything else. Uh, and make sure you come hang out with us on that too we're a small community that just likes to talk strategy and just kind of bs around but that's going to do it guys thanks for watching and i will catch you on the next one